Today we're going to be building out this nav menu section from Figma and moving it over into Webflow. Okay, so once you have your Webflow file created, the first thing we need to do is start on the nav bar. So you can see this nav bar is fairly simple. We have the jam logo as well as five menu items. So in order to do that, I like to start with their pre-made nav bar here. So if you scroll to the uh, element section, you can see this is the starting nav bar. Now what we're gonna do is add our image in here, which I've already uploaded. So we're gonna go ahead and add an image element, click choose file, upload your logo, and then there we go. Now we have it, the gem logo. And then what's next is we need to make sure these menu items all read the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and type these into here real quick. Now that we have the menu to content laid into here, next what we need to do is actually center these menu items. That way it looks a little more like this. So the way I'm gonna do this is by putting the logo on its own line and then the nav menu will be a full width thing. So what I'll do is click div here, put the logo in there, and then I'm gonna make this um, a block element that's width is 100%. And then what I'm gonna do is just say text line center. And now you can see that everything here is being centered. And the jam logo is above. We're gonna make this a display inline block. And then what we'll do is we'll just say position absolute. And then here, what we can do is say uh, top 50%. And then this is kind of a old CSS trick. And then you can say negative 50% on the transform. This way it'll always be centered because like when you just do a normal 50%, it kind of looks like it's 60% like that. But if you say negative 50% on the transform, it actually centers itself. So it's kind of a, just a trick I've learned over the years. So now it's looking pretty good. I also want to make sure this uh, nav bar does have a relative uh, position, which it did, but I'll just confirm it there and leave it like that. That way the absolute position of this, um, logo does not go out of place. And I'm also going to rename this div block to be logo nav logo wrapper. And then I'm also going to give it a Z index because I believe if I scroll over it, it's not clickable at all. You can see there's no uh, pointer cursor. So I need to make it high, have higher level Z index. So what, the way we do that is we're just going to um, select our wrapper and give it a Z index of one. Okay, it's looking good for the most part. And now we just need to clean up the spacing a little further. So you can see mine is much uh, more thin here. The, the width is much thinner than the design file. So we're gonna make this have a larger width. And I believe the design file is using 1400 width. So we're gonna go ahead and set our container to be a max width of 1400. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna apply a class here called container, and then we're gonna set the width to be 1400 pixels. And then I'm also gonna go to this nav bar, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it, um, well, firstly, I'm gonna remove the background color. Here we have a transparent background. So we're gonna go to the background color and click transparent right there. All right, so that's getting pretty close. And then what's next is we need to give it more spacing up here. So I'm just gonna base it off of the tallest point, the closest point. So it looks like that's about 45 pixels right there, give or take. Yeah, that's 46, but let's call it 45. 45 is a cleaner number. I usually try to round things off if possible. Not all the time, but most of the time I wanna round my numbers off just cause I think it looks cleaner that way and it makes me feel better about the work I do. 45 margin and there we go. Now you can see thing is looking pretty sleek. But now what I'm noticing is the uh, fonts here. So you can see it's all caps. So what we're gonna do is update this to be all caps. So we'll go ahead and go to the typography section here, more options and all caps. And then what we need to do is take this nav link and apply it across all of them, this uh, class, that way they all share the same style. And then what we need to do is add some weight on this, uh, this heading. See, it is looking like the bold is gonna be kind of where we're going here. And then what we need to do is actually make the color match as well. So you can see it's using a 3-5 color. What we'll do is go ahead and click on the color here. 
and we'll go in our color palette here and we'll add a new color here this black color we're gonna edit it and uh, edit it to be this 3.5 color save it and I am noticing that our logo is black and this is slightly off black so we're gonna have to re-export it because this is a web redesign this, there, there's an existing page and I'm seeing that some of the colors have changed. So we're going to export this logo as SVG. And what we're going to do is upload the new logo like so. And you can see that it is starting to look very identical to the, um, to the actual design. So the next thing we need to do is add this little border around our active uh, first uh, nav link menu item. So what we'll do is we'll go here, we'll add a new class called um, I guess active or yeah, let's just call it active and we'll just say give it a border Let's give it a border of two pixels Let's give it this color and Then let's also give it the border Radius so now let's give it a border radius. I usually just like to overshoot on these a hundred pixels and then um, obviously this is a lot taller and that's because our padding is set to 20 pixels. So let me select this one now and adjust the padding because if I start adjusting the padding on this one, it's going to do it with the active class ones only. But if I select this one and do the padding, it's going to um, apply to all of them. That's just how you reuse CSS efficiently. But now you can see this is looking pretty close, but now you can see the padding is a little wider on the edges here. So we can go ahead and update the padding there. Yeah, 30 looks pretty good to me. And then on desktop, I just want to make sure this isn't breaking. Okay, it looks good. And then what we'll do is we'll take this background color and we'll apply it to the body over here. And we'll just go to background and we'll set it to this color. And what I'll do is I'll actually create a new class out of this. And there we go. Now, the next thing I want to do is update the mobile views. This design file does not have any mobile views. It's just a desktop view. So sometimes it's the developer's job to kind of handle the mobile views and just kind of follow best practices. So in this case here, you know, we can see we get the hamburger menu on tablet. Let me see if all I try not to go hamburger menu on tablet if possible because I kind of want the items to stay there as long as possible. So what we'll do is we'll decrease it to the mobile landscape and you can see, yeah, we can definitely fit this. We just need to resize it. In order to resize it, the first thing we'll do is we'll go to the nav menu item and then I think we can just text left align this all and then we can reduce the padding from 30 to maybe let's go with 20 and that's already looking better. And then we'll also decrease the font size a little just because it is looking a little large there so that's already looking good and on the smallest tablet view that fits just fine and then what we'll do is we'll also take the nav bar here and i'm also going to make this maybe like 30 pixels make it not too uh based out on tablet so now if we go down to our uh, mobile uh, landscape view so firstly what we'll do is um we'll need to reduce the padding on the hamburger here so it's zero here that way it's more flush and then on the top and bottoms, I'm just going to reduce this, this to five. And then on the right, I'll also reduce this to five as well. And then the icon itself, I'm going to increase the font size of it, maybe like that. Then what I'll do is I'll also reduce the size of the logo here. So we're going to say logo can start to be like 100 pixels here. And then let me open up the menu item. And that's the second problem I'm starting to see is that this does not look good. <laughs> we need to cut theme it in. So what we'll do is we'll click on the icon, show the bar. That way we can enter working on it mode. And I'm just going to go ahead and make the background menu of the hamburger icon transparent. So, and then I'm also going to make sure it shows up as the black color here. It says it is already black, but that's kind of a little glitch in Webflow. You actually have to kind of reapply it sometimes. So just move your cursor here and then select your shortcut again, and then it reapplies it. And then if I click on the nav menu, we can make this a different color as well. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it as this background color here. And then what you can start to see is that we have our active state here. I think we can remove this on um, our tablet view. So we'll go ahead and we can't just delete the class because it'll delete it for all of them. So we have to go to the 
border settings and just kind of, you know, disable all of this. So what we'll do is we'll just say border none and that should fix it. And then I am, uh, this does look a little tight to me here. So we'll go ahead and go to the nav menu item, add some spacing on top here, 20 pixels. And I can see there's a little padding here from the logo as well. In order to fix that, we'll go ahead and click this brand, brand element that wraps the image and just say padding on the left zero. And then what else I'm noticing is that this all looks a little too aligned to the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually center this by clicking one of these and clicking center. And I also want this font to be much larger. So with like 24, I think that looks okay. And then we can space these out a little more. So what I'll, I'll give much larger padding here, maybe like 25. And then on mobile view, it feels a little big here. We'll just make it smaller, maybe like 18. And then the padding will reduce to like 15 ish. And now what the next thing I want to do is add like a little shadow at the bottom to show where the uh, nav actually ends. And if we scroll down to the shadow area, we can go ahead and click box shadow, to give it some distance like so. Blur can be a little higher. It's fine. Give it more distance. And then the size can be reduced like so. And now it feels like there's some separation between the nav menu when it's opened and the actual content of the website. And one more thing I'll do is I'll actually update the shadow color to be the brand color we're using like so. And then I'll just tone it down with some opacity a little bit here. And now it looks like it's working. So let's go ahead and actually publish this to our staging site. If we open it up, we can see it is right here. I open my inspector here and start to resize it. You can see, yep, it's doing good. It's doing good. Then hamburger is showing up. Our nav menu is here. And yeah, it's working. Everything has been applied. And I mean, one thing I will say is the padding's a little tight on the bottom here. So I'll go ahead and fix that. So we're gonna go ahead to our nav menu and I'm gonna increase the padding here to maybe like 20 as well. Publish that, Let's hit refresh and open it up. And yeah, there we go, a little more padding. So that feels better to me. Okay, so that's how you build a navigation bar in Webflow. And this was the design file we were referencing. Now, again, I did say in the beginning of this video that we will be designing this entire uh, Figma project inside of Webflow. So be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for all of my episodes. This is gonna be the first episode of many more to come. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions about Webflow, be sure to leave your comments down in the comment section below. And I also work on Webflow projects as a contractor. So if you need help with your project, feel free to contact me and I'll be sure to work with you to see if your project is a good fit. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.